What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here, and when it comes to Revit tools, stairs are one of the most complex tools in Revit, and stairs are also one of my favorite building elements when it comes to uh, designing buildings. I think they can uh, look really cool, they can be boring, but they can also be amazing. So I like to explore uh, how to create some amazing staircases in Revit and how to use uh, Revit's tool to create these stairs. Now, I, I, today I'm going to be creating this sort of a spiraling open floating stair. I think it looks really cool. Uh, and uh, I actually have a full course where I explore both stairs and railing in Revit. And if you're interested, it's a whole five hour course. So if you want to really take apart the stair uh, tool and the railing tool and really learn about everything so you can make pretty much any type of a stair in Revit, as I can. Uh, and it's available on my website, balkanarctic.com. So that's going to be the first link in the description. Uh, also, if you follow the second link in the description, there you can find all of my Revit project files, such as this file that we're going to be creating today. Okay, so without any further ado, let's get straight into Revit. And here we are in Revit. And now just to start a new project, I'm going to go to models, go to new, and then I'm going to be modeling this as an architectural template project. So just select that and click OK. Uh, now for the units for this one, it's not that complicated. So I'm going to leave that part out. And first thing that we have to do is to create a stair. Uh, usually for creating stairs, I tend to model the stair itself first and then to set up the properties. Uh, now you can always go first to stair and then go and edit the type added the properties. Uh, I, I just prefer to create the stair first, model it first, and then uh, play around with the properties. The reason for that is because you can actually see the changes happening uh, over here when you when you make them. Okay, so uh, now well, before we place the stair, I like to have a, a stair that's, well, first it has to be an assembled stair. Uh, so for any type of a stair like this, where you have a bit of a more complex design, that's going to have some sort of a structural uh, element, some sort of a stringer. Uh, in that case, you have to go with the assembled stair. And then uh, in, in other cases where you have a more monolithic concrete stair, then you would go with one of these. Okay, so, uh, but of course the question is which one of these? Uh, now, something that I like to do is I like to double check the dimensions of each of these types, and then I tend to choose the one that's closest to what they want to achieve. Uh, so for this particular stair, uh, as you probably remember from the image that I've shown, and maybe I can open it up here, here we go. Okay, so as you can see from the, uh, oops, as you can see from the image, if I can I resize it here? Yeah, there we go. Okay, so uh, as you can see from the image, we have quite a wide stair and it's it's quite a comfortable stair. It isn't that steep. So what I'm going to be doing here uh, in Revit is choosing a stair that's similar to that. Uh, so here, uh, this one has a riser height of uh, 180 millimeters with the tread depth of 250. Now that's kind of uh, average residential stair. Uh, now the industrial and assembly, uh, the actual tread depth is 280 and the height is 173. This is uh, a bit less steep and a bit more comfortable. And then also we have the uh, this uh, disabled uh, stair. This is uh, 160 with 250. And then also we have the private, which is the steepest one. Uh, riser height is 210, which is probably uh, a little bit higher than you would like to go. So what I'm going to do is just go with this one because I feel it's like the most comfortable stair. Of course, you can adjust these parameters as well. I talk all about that in the course, uh, but for now, let's just choose that one. Okay, so now for the run width, so that's how wide the, the stair is. Uh, I tend to set this up to something just a bit higher. So it's currently 1000 millimeters. Let's go with 1200 millimeters. And finally, to place the stair, uh, of course, we have to go here to component. And then this is going to be a full uh, step spiral stair. And now, of course, it makes sense to double check that the base level and the top level are set correctly. I'm happy with this. So let's just click once in the center and then you can go out and place your stair. Now, how far out you want to go is uh, up to you. I tend to leave uh, a chunk here something like this. Uh, so you have enough room for the people to get off the stair and to get on the stair. So if I open up the image once again here, as you can see in this area, 
that's where you actually uh, access the stair and then you can either go up or go down uh, so well, let's go back into Revit so this is that area that I want to uh, kind of leave out okay so once that is done we can just finish and we're done and now of course it's time to well set this up correctly so let's move to the 3d view and let's zoom in over here so here this is what the stair looks like maybe we can go and set it up as a uh, realistic view to see it a bit better there we go uh, so it's a really nice stair but of course we have to make a lot of changes so the first change uh, I'm going to make is to kind of open it up a little bit so what you want to do for pretty much any changes of your stair is to select the stair itself let's go here to the assembled stair industrial and assembly and let's go into edit type and I'm actually going to be creating a new type of stair for this project of course so let's duplicate this one and let's call this one our new modern stair actually it looks kind of postmodern from that design but anyways let's just call it modern okay so uh, with the stairs selected uh, what I'm going to do now is uh, just start changing and playing around with the parameters uh, so the first thing that I'm going to be playing around with is going to be the supports so as you remember from the image uh, basically we have kind of an inner support delete so we only have the support on the outside so what I'm going to be doing for that is uh, basically just uh, getting rid of this inner support so for the supports here we have a whole section for supports we have the right support and the left support looking at this there here this one is the right this one is the left so the inner one is the left so you just want to come in here find the left support and here it's set up as a stringer and a closed stringer so you just want to open that up like you want to set up a different type and then you're going to choose none and that's going to change the uh, that's going to change the stair so if I just click OK there we go so as you can see it deleted or gotten rid of that inner stringer or inner construction let's go uh, select the stair and let's go in back into edit type uh, now here for the stringer itself here it's quite thin and narrow and if I open up the image as you can see it's quite wide so uh, let's just close this off let's go to the stringer itself so here we have the right support type this is the stringer family and then you can edit that so here the width is set to 50 let's make it a hundred Hit apply and as you can see it's quite wider now uh, now one more thing that I find annoying is the fact that if I just okay out of this menu uh, zoom in over here as you can see here it seems like a step is kind of on the top of the support and then then there is like a lot of room on the bottom I like it to be kind of centered so the step is kind of in the middle of the support so what you can do for that is select the stair go into edit type go to that stringer edit that stringer type and then here uh, for the structural depth on run instead of uh, 150 you set it just down to 100 and hit apply and as you can see the whole thing moves up so we haven't really changed the uh, the height of this stringer or this support we have only changed its position and I'm quite happy with this position so let's just click OK apply OK and there we go uh, next of course we have to play around with these steps themselves so let's zoom in a little bit here uh, go into edit type oops select the stair first to go into the type and now here we have the run type and that's referring to the stairs so if I just go here into edit I can change the first uh, the riser so the risers are these vertical parts and I can just uncheck them and hit apply and now it's gonna hollow and then also for the nosing profile I don't like it here as you can see this is the nosing profile so if you just set that to default it's going to be flat which is actually what they prefer uh, for the thickness we can let's make it a bit thicker at 60 and there we go I really like the design now uh, now a couple of more a couple of more changes I would like to change the material because this doesn't uh, kind of look uh, like the stair that we have so we want the steps to be black now I'm going to go with some sort of a black rubber so go here to materials and finishes tread material and then what you want to do is just go to this little button with three dots it's going to open up the material browser I'm going to search for black and then here uh, with the materials 
There should be a black rubber, uh, load that material in and then hit apply. Okay, apply. And as you can see now, this is black. Click OK to go back to the menu. And then for the stringer itself, uh, you can go here to the right support type, go into edit, and then here we can change the material. So uh, you can just go into edit and let's go with some sort of a chrome. A steel, chrome plated, that's fine. Click apply and it's going to turn black. Now, if you're using Revit 2020 or earlier versions, uh, Chrome or any sort of a reflective material is going to appear as black, but if you're using Revit 2021, uh, then it's going to, well, it's going to look like it does. Now, in this case, it is going to look uh, reflective, but only when we render. Till then, it's just going to appear black because I'm using Revit 2020, so just keep that in mind. Okay, and of course, uh, let's get rid of the railing as it doesn't have railing in that image, which is quite unsafe and probably <laughs> it violates a few codes, but yeah, that's, that's what we have. This person here is certainly getting sued. Okay, so anyways, uh, let's go to level one and add some sort of a floor there. So I'm just going to go here to floor, uh, place a simple rectangle just like that, hit finish, uh, go into level two, here I'm going to go again for a floor, simple rectangle, follow the existing one. And then here for the stair, uh, I'm just going to use the pick lines tool, select the outer line, the inner line and the beginning and the end like that. Then what you want to do is select this inner circle and you want to kind of invert it. So just do that. This is what we want to achieve. And also we want to kind of fill out this part here, so you can do that by using the trim and extend tool. So just trim and extend to corner here and here, and we're done. So just hit finish. And also uh, here the floor is 150 millimeter. That's okay, but I'm going to go into edit type, go into structure, and let's change the material to something white, just to give it a bit of contrast for the rendering. Here we have gypsum wallboard. That's going to be fine for just for demonstration purposes. Hit apply. Okay, there we go. Go back into level one. And then just to kind of illustrate what this looks like, uh, I'm going to go here to the default 3D view, open up the drop menu and find the camera. Uh, now for the camera, I'm going to place it something like this. There we go. Perfect. And extend the view, of course, to capture the whole stair. And as you can see, we have that little part where you walk up to the stair. Uh, now one more thing, I like to turn off the far clip active, so now you can see kind of the edges of this thing. Perfect. Okay, so now just to test everything out, let's uh, go to view, uh, to render, and let's set this up as medium, printer, 300, uh, okay, let's hit render and see what happens. Okay, so when it's done rendering, it makes sense to go here to the image and adjust exposure. So I'm just going to make it a tad brighter, maybe even more. There we go. Click OK. And that's what we have. So that's our uh, spiral stair. We have that chrome support on the outside. And here we have our black steps. I think it looks really cool and futuristic. Uh, I, I really like the design. I really like the look. I, I'm not really uh, crazy about the safety of it all. Uh, but uh, as far as the aesthetic and the design, uh, I think it looks really cool. Maybe a glass railing on the side would look, would look really cool. Uh, but even as is uh, like this, I think it looks, uh, I think it looks really good. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this quick little tutorial. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed it and I hope you have learned something new. If you're interested in a complete course on stairs and railing, check out my website, balkanarctic.com. It's going to be the first link in the description. Uh, also, if you want this project file as well as all of my other Revit project files, make sure to check out my Patreon. Uh, that's going to be the second link in the description. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this uh, quick little tutorial. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.